Okay people welcome back and for those who haven't left yet I was busy in the evening time but I'm back here and we're gonna discuss a lot of things tonight so it's gonna be really exciting I'm gonna record a tons of lecture today I'm in a full mood full swing okay so let's discuss and continue so in this movie we are gonna discuss about the logical operators now so far you have seen that in the if and else cases in the if case specially we have been able to just uh, test one condition and it's not true that you are always going to test for one condition sometimes you do want to check out for multiple conditions for example the player has a life or player has a credit card or when the user simply logs in uh, or buys a course out there on the udemy they checks out multiple condition whether you the course is free or not or whether the user is having a credit card or not or payment in the credit card so there are a lot of things going on so for that I would like to bring up my file that says operator 3 and instead of going in the full screen I'll just increase it a little bit crashing is quite a lot of problem in the Xcode right now it's in the beta but yes still crashing is a lot of problem okay so let's zoom it a little bit out there so that it looks good okay so what we want to discuss first of all so there are three types of logical operations and let me write them specifically so first one is the not operation which inverts whatever the value you have in the boolean case so if you have true it creates the value false and you got the idea and then we have the and 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 simply says that if any one condition is gonna be false I'm gonna give you the entire result false so there will be multiple condition a b c d e and if any one of them is gonna be false I'm gonna return a false so all should be true to make the condition true and like that there is a or now or has a different concept it says that if any one condition is gonna be true I'm gonna return true no matter what the else says if one is true I'm gonna say true that's it so what we want to do with that let's test out all of this so let's just say there is a score or let's just say not the score if the life is false so somehow the calculation has been gone and the life of the player is false and I do want to check if the user has run out of the life or not so I can do if life is not false then I can just simply say to my player that keep playing so I'm gonna just print a value and simply saying you can still play the game and there we go so although the condition was false and this code should not be running but still it does run because we use we are using an exclamation sign which just inverts the condition it's a not operator and pretty simple okay this is the simple not operator and now let's talk about the and operation so and operation let's get a value for that a couple of values in fact so let's just say if the user logged in let's just say I'm designing for Udemy course and if the user logged in is true and let's say you want to buy a course and credit card is not present so I'm just gonna put a false value out there and now I'll check out for the multiple condition so I'll check if the user logged in and because I need both condition to be true to purchase a course now I'm gonna say credit card is also there then I can make something like this and I'll just print a message in this case and I'll be saying user can purchase the course there we go and in the else part let's design the else code as well it's gonna be pretty simple so it's gonna say let's just use a printf and I'm gonna say uh, you are not allowed to purchase this at this time would be good at this time okay so we can see that both condition need to be true in this particular case so that's how this goes and this is the two and operator by which you can give your and operation out there and if I just put a two exclam two pipe sign this actually converts it into the or operation 
So right now, this is or, that means if any one condition is gonna be true, the result is gonna be true. So that's why it says user can purchase the course. But for the current example that we have taken, it's not a good idea to use the or. But there will be cases, for sure there will be many many cases, where you do want to check. Now, this is a very simple basic example. Let's just say I want to add more data to it. So let's just say what more we can have here. So let's just say that user, what else we can have? So user is logged in, user is having credit card and account is created, let's just say. So account created is true as well. So that there we go. Now we can check out for multiple conditions. Let's just check an and here. So I'm gonna say account created as well. And there we go. And it simply says false because of a simple reason. The credit card is false and you are not allowed to purchase because your account is not created. Might be your credit card not there or logged in is not there. But in case if you use or every time and you can use a combination as well of and and or but just wrap them in the pair of parentheses so you can see with the pipe sign this can user can now purchase the course so it's a really good example that we have taken in fact a real life example that we have taken out here so i'm gonna just copy and paste this code just for you so that you can have some exercise files and i'm gonna replace it with the r operation there we go pretty simple and let's just comment it out so it says example and there we go example for our operation and let's just do one more here and let's just say example for and operation there we go okay so looks good so we have covered the and or and everything in a very detailed manner but yes, you can do use the explicit parenthesis and that's completely fine. You can wrap uh, these two guys into the brackets and check out for the AND condition and for the whole uh, true and false, whatever is being evaluated, you can use AND or OR sign against this as well. So it's pretty common, pretty easy to use multiple logics out there. And there you go. Now you have the knowledge of all the operations that you can perform in the Swift. Wouldn't it be so easy? Yes, it was so easy. Let's move on and try to understand a little bit more of the Swift 3.